Scientific analysis links almost 70% of new bovine tuberculosis outbreaks in at-risk areas to wild animals, mostly possums. Controlling the wild animal species that spread TB and eventually eradicating the disease in wildlife is a key part of the TB-free New Zealand program. The Animal Health Board uses a range of methods to control possums. The vast majority of its TB control operations are ground-based, using a combination of traps and toxins. However, aerially applied sodium fluoroacetate, or 1080, remains the most effective and cost-efficient method available to control possums, particularly in New Zealand's notoriously rugged, steep and remote terrain. We are interested in possum control for the purposes of TB control because the main cause of tuberculosis in our cattle and deer herds is contact with infected possums and we need to stop that happening. Aerial control operations can kill up to 98% of possums in target areas and are highly effective in keeping numbers low enough to prevent the spread of tuberculosis between possums and out onto farms. I think we really need to support the use of it in, uh, until there's a, a better option comes along. Um, where it, it's, it's the best way to control possums at the moment and if we don't control them we're, we're in trouble really. So I think we really do need to keep using it. We couldn't get below about 20, 27 herds, we just couldn't, we dropped down two or three and uh, until they aerial dropped the, uh, in the TNA, done the 1080 drop here in the Hokanui's, then it just plummeted, it just went, it was unbelievable what happened. Despite being used effectively for more than 40 years, the aerial distribution of 1080 still attracts some opposition. I don't see it as a as a real problem, but it will, uh, it's manifesting itself, I guess, as the anti-1080 scenario. And while we're looking at a number of toxins, that, that some of them which may be able to be used for aerial control, it again will be aerial dispersal. From my perspective, we have to do something about it. We have to get on top of it. And, um, and we're talking 1080 here. Mm. Obviously, that's one of the most um, uh, best tools, if you like, that we have available and um, we just have to use it. There's nothing more sobering than a dose of TB in your, in your um, herd to bring you to a stark reality of what it, what it means. Like it never seems to be a priority for those that wish to deny us some of these tools in our vector control kit. You know, we're, we're getting a, a view from the hunting fraternity and, you know, a lot of what I call the other the other perspective, it's never the fact that bovine TB, you know, has a critical um, effect on, on my farm and my income and, and consequently if we don't sort it, it'll be on the value of my farm and the value of my community, you know, they were the issues we were facing with widespread infection. We, I lost a dog mm -hmm. and uh, we lost a few sheep at one stage because they pushed through some sort of a natural barrier area that had been um, 1080 but you know it was just part of the process in yeah. some way. I'm not the greatest poison fan in the world even on my own farming operation I only use it sprays and poisons when I really have to yeah. but I can categorically say that if it hadn't have been for the 1080 the use of 1080 and the Hokanui's we would not be TB free. In light of people's concerns, two independent inquiries have been undertaken into the safety of 1080 and its ability to effectively control and reduce pests such as possums, stoats and rats. It really isn't another alternative. I mean, we did look at the other alternatives very thoroughly, but there just isn't. The year-long investigation reviewed DOC and other studies and heard from groups for and against the poison. I can understand why people would be worried about it, but there's plenty of evidence to show that it's a very, very small risk. Both reports have concluded that carefully regulated use of 1080 is not only safe, but vital for disease and pest control. I thought the IRMA process was um, well considered and well executed. Uh, everybody had their say. And so, you know, I hang my hat on the findings of that body. I thought it was, um, you know, a good, robust analysis of what it could and couldn't offer New Zealand. And uh, like I said, I find, um, I find the improvements that we all want, I think, as a country, 
particularly in the biodiversity arena, um, you know, it's integral to having that available in our toolkit. The work that the Animal Health Board's doing um, in terms of pest control is really significant for conservation in New Zealand because they actually cover more area in terms of pest control than even the Department of Conservation. So in some ways the Animal Health Board is helping to give nature a voice. By 2026, the TB Free New Zealand programme aims to eradicate the disease from wildlife across a quarter of the 10 million hectares currently containing infected wild animals. The aerial application of biodegradable 1080 is a small but vital part of this programme. The Animal Health Board supports the Pest Control Education Trust, a public education initiative launched by Federated Farmers and Forest and Bird to provide balanced information about the safe use of toxins to control predatory mammals and the diseases they spread.